Hey guys, uh, Math and Mr. Burns here again, bringing another sick math video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to discuss find the exact roots of a quadratic equation. So, a quadratic equation, something of the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, where a, b, and c are just numbers, um, and they go into their specific spot into the quadratic formula. So. Um, you know, this guy, depending on what curriculum you do, maybe call it general form, maybe call it standard form, so it all depends. It doesn't really matter as long as you know what it looks like. Um, AX squared plus BX plus C. It's a trinomial. Sometimes B or C could be equal to zero. You can still use this formula. So, a lot of times, of course, it's not given in this form, and we have to do a little bit more work um, to be able to, to get it to that form first before we can use quad form. So, before we use quad form, it has to look like this. The other thing I'll uh, mention is before I um, do a question, I want to bring your attention to the word exact. So exact means that um, if we have a root that's not perfect, so something other underneath here that might be, say, like root 24, which is not a perfect square, we have to leave it or simplify it as much as we can. All right? Let's give a problem a shot and see what happens. <clears throat> so we can see this one here. It's not in ax squared plus bx plus c form, so I'll just write it up here for reference. ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. So it's not in that form. So we need to make it look like this. The first thing we kind of do is just distribute through here with this x. So I get x squared minus 3x. So I'm just multiplying. is equal to negative 9. Now, we don't have a 0 on the right-hand side here, so I need to get rid of this negative 9. So I'll add 9 to both sides, plus 9. So ax squared minus 3x plus 9 is equal to 0. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to use quadratic formula. So I'll write it out, just, you know, I'm assuming that you guys are kind of new at this. So x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. So my negative b, so this is my b value. So some, some of my students like to write out what my a is. Well, my a in this case is 1. There's no number in front of the x squared, so it's just 1. My b is negative 3. And my c value is 9. So when I go to put this negative 3 in here, I have a negative, negative 3. So... I'll write that there. A lot of my students would just jump immediately to a positive, which is what you guys can do. I just want to illustrate where the positive is going to come from. And then I have negative 3 squared. Really important, guys, to pay attention to the brackets in underneath the square root. Minus 4. A is 1. C is 9. I'll divide it by 2, and then A is 1. All right, so I get my... Negative, negative 3, well, that's just 3, plus or minus. Keep messing up that plus or minus here with this tablet. Plus or minus the square root, and that's going to be 9 minus, this guy looks like it's 36, all over 2. So it looks like we're actually going to get a, uh, a negative number underneath the root sign. So that actually opens up a little bit more of a dilemma than I thought that I was going to have to deal with in this question. But anyway, I just kind of pulled this one out of, out of my uh, notes. Um, so when you have a negative underneath the root sign, it makes things a little bit complicated. It means that there are no real roots. So let me just get that next step. So it's going to be 3 plus or minus. It's better. This guy's going to be negative 27 all over 2. So the fact that we have a negative root, so negative 27, means there are no real root. So what I mean by real is that if I graphed this quadratic, it's not going to cross the x-axis. So it might look like this, you know, depending on where the vertex was to. It could be over here too. Um, it's going to look like this. So that means there aren't actually any x-intercepts. So there are no real answers to this equation. So there's no value for x here that I can put into this thing and get back negative 9. It's just not going to happen. So, we still need to algebraically find the, the exact roots. So, the problem with this is, is this, you can't take the square root of a negative number. So, what, you know, year, many years ago, 
when they were stumped on this, they basically just came up with the decision that root negative 1 is equal to i. So what we can do is we can break this 27 up into negative 1 times 27, which is the same as root negative 1 times 27, which is i root 27. So the i is just representative of that negative root. So anytime we have that, then we know there are no real roots. In fact, they will be classified as imaginary because they really don't exist. They only algebraically make sense. So this breaks down to i root 27. And when I've taught this in the past, guys, I've always showed my students, you know, this is where it comes from, but what you need to know procedural based is that if I have a negative root, boom, get rid of the negative, put an i outside. And then I need to break down that 27. Well, 27 is 9 times 3. So it becomes, underneath the root becomes 9 times 3 all over 2. And I'm just going to move up here so I don't run out of space. And I have 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 is 3. So that's going to come outside. So it's 3i root 3 all divided by 2. And there it is. That's my exact roots for this guy. All right, I wasn't expecting the imaginary number, but it doesn't matter anyway. It's a good example. Let's try the next one. So hopefully we get a real number with this one. So it's kind of a similar situation. We don't have ax squared plus bx plus c any, uh, here, so we need to make it. So we'll distribute as well. So we'll take the 2x and we'll go through. Just like that. So I get 5x squared plus 3 is equal to 2x squared plus and then 2x times so that's 8x. So I'll subtract 2x from both sides. Subtract 2x squared. 2x squared. So I get 3x squared plus 3 is equal to 8x. And then I'll subtract 8x from both sides. So I get 3x squared minus 8x plus 3 is equal to 0. And now I have ax squared plus bx plus c form. So a is 3, b is negative 8, and then c is also 3. All right, so let's go ahead and start this guy. So x is equal to negative b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. <clears throat> Alright, so let's go ahead and fill this guy in. So I have negative b, so negative 3, or sorry, negative 8, so it's, it's going to be plus 8. I almost messed that up. See, it's important to think about this stuff, right? So plus 8, that's too messy. Let's uh, clean that up a little bit. So I get 8 plus or minus, and it's negative 8 squared minus 4. A is 3. C is 3. All over 2 times 3. So that becomes 8 plus or minus. And we got to do the math underneath here. So I'm just going to show this all in my calculator at one time. So negative 8 squared minus... 4 times 3 times 3, so that becomes 28. So we get a positive number this time, so that means we have real roots. Basically, what's underneath the root sign will determine the nature of the roots. So a negative means we have no real solutions, a positive, two real solutions, and then a zero would be one real solution. All right, so, and that's another video. So if you're looking for more information on that, just Google uh, on my channel, discriminant or nature of the roots. So then we need to break this 28 up. So we need a perfect square. So 4 times four times 7. If you're lucky enough to have a Casio calculator, chances are it'll do it for you. TIs that I've used have, haven't been able to do that. And then square root of 4 is 2. So it's 8 plus or minus 2 root 7 all over 6. So this guy reduces down. So what I usually tell my students is look for the three numbers here. So this... 
this little triangle, one, two, three. If all these numbers are divisible by the same number, then we're good to go. Once we have this root reduced, we don't touch it. Okay, this root never gets touched once it's reduced. So I can divide everything here by 2, so it becomes 4 plus or minus 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I'll just write root 7. And then uh, 6 divided by 2 is 3. And there it is. Those are my exact roots. So notice, guys, I'm not working out this to a decimal, even though I could. That wouldn't be exact. That would be approximate roots. All right, so I hope this video helps. You can figure out the quadratic formula. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you guys in class. Like, share, subscribe if you found this video helpful.